There's no question that real estate has changed in the past few months. We've documented a lot of those changes right here on the walkthrough. Virtual tours, social distancing protocols, keeping homes really, really clean in between every showing, stuff like that. Now that we've figured out a lot of that as an industry, here's the next big question. How many of those changes will stick around? Take something like an open house, for example. Many of you have been doing those on video, right? Well, is that a permanent change for you? Well, I bet some of you listening right now are thinking, yeah, more virtual open houses for me. That's definitely the way I want to do them going forward. But then others are probably thinking, no, once things settle down and get back to normal, whatever that is, we'll do open houses the way we've always done them. It's all good. There's no right or wrong answer to that. But what about something like door knocking? What about client appreciation events? How is all that going to work in the future? Well, today we're looking ahead and we have a fantastic guest to join us on this journey. It's part two of our conversation with Tom Ferry. This is The Walkthrough. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? We have made it to the month of June. Congrats all around. I'm Matt McGee, editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center and your host every week right here on The Walkthrough. On this show, you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created The Walkthrough. We're on a journey exploring how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. We have two ways that you can contribute to the show. Leave a message for me anytime at 415-322-3328, or you can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. I do read and hear all the messages that come in, and I might use them on an upcoming show. Our agenda for today is part two of our conversation with Tom Ferry. Afterward, I will give out a number where you can text Tom directly. He does that on his own podcast every once in a while. And also, stay tuned at the end for our Home Light Home Run segment featuring an agent based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. As I said last week, I don't think I need to introduce Tom Ferry. He's one of the top real estate coaches in the world, after all. He's kind of like the Iron Man of real estate coaching, or maybe Captain America. Either way, it's an appropriate analogy because much like the Marvel movies, it would help just a bit if you heard part one of our conversation. It's not entirely necessary, but it would help. Last week's episode was basically a masterclass in getting more listings, which is so important right now. Tom talked about real estate being the solution to the country's economic woes. For that to happen, agents, you got to take three to four times more listings than you have right now, he said. That's because inventory is so low. More listings means more sales, and that kickstarts the economy. So how do you get more listings right now? Well, last week, Tom walked us through six specific things that you can do to identify potential sellers in your market. Here's a quick bit of what you missed or a reminder for those of you who already listened. The average consumer has no idea, and most of them are in your database. So what if, if you have a 1,000 people, don't do this with all 1,000 in your database. If you got 500, I probably wouldn't do it. I'd isolate it. But if you got 100 or 200, send them all an email today. And in the subject line, put in, ready? Want to know exactly how much your home's worth during COVID? 15 minutes, just you and me. That's a taste of last week's episode, so please do give that a listen later if you missed it the first time around. Today, as I mentioned, the focus shifts to the future. What is real estate going to look like a year from now or a few years from now? Listen as Tom and I talk about open houses, client appreciation events, door knocking, and more. And not just agent-focused things like those, but we also talk about how buyer and seller behavior might change in the weeks and months ahead. As we rejoin the conversation, Tom has just shared those six specific tips for getting more listings and growing your business the rest of this year. As we wrapped up that portion of the conversation, 
Tom mentioned another upcoming event that he thinks will have a big impact on the real estate market. Here's part two of my conversation with Tom Ferry. What am I committed to going forward? That's what matters right now for people. And I know the person listening right now, you know what I'm saying. It is about designing what May, June, July, August, September, October is going to look like because heads up what's also coming in the go forward plan without a shadow of a doubt is going to be the most tumultuous presidential election we have ever seen. It is going to be so ugly that it's going to freak people out even more, right? It is going to be doom, gloom, disaster times 10. So guess what? I'm telling my agents, you better make it rain in May, June, July, August, September, October, and have monster closing months in November, December, because it's probably going to be middle of October through, call it the end of December, where the vast majority of consumers are going to be in a state of PTSD from the election. And you're absolutely right. I, I'm getting the sense too from just the conversations I'm having with agents that it is now, they're switching mentally and actionally into all right, what are we going to do for the rest of the year? So let me ask you to f- do, uh, let me do a fill in the blank with you. The agents who will, <laughs> it's always that, yeah. The agents who will have a great second half of 2020 are the ones who blank. Implement two of the ideas that I just discussed with so much rigor, grit, and intensity that they tell everyone in their family and their loved ones I'm going to make all of my money for 2020 between May and December by doing the right stuff between May and October. Awesome. I love that. And because, and that, that harkens back to what you were saying earlier about the potential of the election starting to mess with people's minds and plans and that sort of thing. Matt, don't sugarcoat it. It's absolutely going to mess with people. We're going to, we're going to see one of the, the worst back and forth presidential election nonsense that we've ever seen in our lifetime. And I am, look, I am like Switzerland, brother. Like I made money with, you know, Clinton, with Bush, with Obama, with Trump, because I pivot and navigate and I don't buy into that BS. I focus on serving my customers. But remember our customers, some of them get caught up in that nonsense. So it's going to impact housing. It's not going to be, it's not going to be devastating. But I would expect a 20% slowdown after the rush that we're going to have May, June, July, August, September. You're looking at, we're looking ahead to the election a bit. I would love to look ahead to the future of real estate, say a year from now or three years from now. And let's just maybe talk about some list of traditional real estate practices. And you tell me what you think they'll look like a year or three from now, right? So open houses. Will agents want to do open houses? Will buyers and sellers want open houses? Listen, about uh, five or six years ago, I put on my first set of Oculus. And, and I remember you know, being at, I, I think I was at like uh, Comic-Con or something with my, at that time, younger children, now older. And I remember taking it off and saying to myself, this is how we're going to buy houses right? This is exactly how I'm going to pick my neighborhood. This is how I'm going to walk outside to see what the backyard looks like. And if they could just add the scent, uh, you know, of the cookies inside the oven, I'm going to buy the house sight unseen, right? So I think it's going to come down to you ready. It's going to be split. I think the vast majority of people are going to recognize that we've gone into that. uh, My goodness, what uh, I'm trying to think of her name, the incredible author who wrote about this a million years ago, Faith Popcorn, who said, We're going in, by the way, this was written like 1991. She said, we're going into a world where people are going to cocoon and they're going to be sitting and living in front of their screens and they're going to be just fine with it. She wrote that in 1991, right? Futurist, right? Faith Popcorn. So I think it's going to be split. I don't know what the percentage is, but I think a lot of people are going to say, hey, you know what? You can sell my house without a bunch of strangers coming through. Let's go ahead and do that. And some are going to say, hey, because of the uniqueness of this property or the situation of this property, the more people we get through, we can create a bidding war to maybe drive the price up. So I think the future, what's so exciting is it's going to be both. What do you think is the future of a tactic like door knocking? You know, I think about, uh, I think my dad went into real estate in like the 1960s or, you know, I think it was, I guess, must have been maybe 60s, maybe early 70s. And he made his entire living on that. And I know, 
you know, tens of thousands of agents, including some of the most successful high-end luxury brokers, that when they when they've exhausted every possible resource to find a home that isn't available for their buyer who wants something very specific, will knock on their door and say, "Hi, my name is Maxine Gellens with Berkshire Hathaway," and and usually the you know the client's like, "Oh my God, you know you're one of the most successful agents. This is nuts, right?" <laughs> right, right. You know now I know that's not the case for everybody, but that's a true story with Maxine who, you know, in her like late 70s did that, did it in her early 80s and said, you know, I got a buyer. So, you know, look, I think it's going to be a mixed bag. Again, I think the PTSD coming out of this is going to be, you know, pretty strong for some people. You know, I mean, you know, people that are mask shaming today, which I think is just hysterical, right? And, you know, I mean, I get it, right? But, you know, some people are taking it just a little too far, I think some of that's going to carry all the way through 2021. So door knocking, if I had to bet, I'd probably, I'd minus it by like 90%. I, it, it does still work for some agents. And so I, I, I've, I've connected with a few of them over the last couple of months. And so I'm worried about what the rest of their year is going to look like. Yeah, if, that was my, if that was my only strategy, I'd be pivoting hard. I, I totally agree with that. Um, I also know some, some real estate agents who do great business through regular client appreciation events, right? Getting their sphere together, getting, you know, get a hundred people at the ball game or whatever. Yep. What's that going to look like in the future? Can we keep doing that kind of thing? Uh, I think it's going to be state by state, right? I think the, you know, if you're in a state that is overly regulatory, I think you can plan on more clampdown for a while. I mean, look, look what look the, the mayor of LA just came out and said, you know, basically, we're going to be closed until there's a solution. Well, I mean, you know, what is that like? I don't even know how many people, 10 million, 15 million people that are like, what do we do now? Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, those, those agents will pivot and those buyers will buy and those sellers will sell and they will navigate through this. So when it comes to client appreciation, which I'm a huge fan of, it's a strategy that everyone should be taking on. It's going to depend upon what state you're in, what country you're in, you know, and what's the mindset of your clients. I know people today that are throwing parties in all kinds of states and getting together with all kinds of people. And they all say, you know, hey, we're social distancing to a certain extent. We're not letting people come in that are sick. That's going on right now, right? So guess what? That's gonna continue. We as human beings are social creatures. We are gonna find ways to connect and to hug and to smile and to toast and to say happy birthday. We're gonna do all that stuff. Like that's not gonna end. What, which is that, that segues right into the other thing I wanted to ask you about it, the industry itself, real estate agents themselves. Do you foresee agents wanting to get back to the office, or will there be a an increase in work from home and remote work? You know, I, I got to tell you that uh, if I was a real estate broker today, I would definitely be second guessing my square footage. And I coach a lot of CEOs um, of very large companies and some, you know, some smaller, you know, 500 agent companies, I will tell you that every one of them is looking at that. The, probably the last business I'd want to be in right now is commercial high rise. Right. Yeah. That's right? because, I mean, what this has shown us is that we can work from home, that we can connect via Zoom. We can maintain our culture and our communication, whether it's with Slack or email or some other form. Um, so yeah, I think there's going to be probably the demand for smaller footprints, lowering the broker's cost or, you know, the agent's, you know, square footage, I can absolutely see way more. And we're talking about doing it in our own business. I've got, you know, 45,000 square feet and 175 full-time employees that are, you know, used to come in every day. And now we're like, how do we reorganize this place? And I'm in California where it's a little more crazy than most states, right? It could be every third desk or every two out of three get removed. So we're going to have to completely reimagine the workspace and it's going to be integrated with technology and communication like we're doing now on Zoom. That's just going to be the new norm. But heads up, for everyone out there listening, what if I told you that there is a gazillion agents that work from home and that's where their most productive activities take place. And even today, they're having their assistant or their buyer's agent or their marketing director are showing up to their house and they're working and they're very comfortable in that setting. Right. And I know entire businesses, you know, Matt, where everybody is remote and they were built on a virtual platform. And I know agents that work in second home communities that have done listing presentations over the phone, via webinar, via Zoom, and they've been doing that for five years. Right. So 
Most of us, we just got forced into the digital transformation of the workplace. And now that we're here, I don't see us going back. What about buyers and sellers? How do you think this is going to change what they are doing, what they're looking for in a home, specifically buyers? Are, are buyers going to want an extra bedroom that they can use as an office? Are they going to want more space because the kids are going to be home, the spouse is going to be home? Do you foresee that they're going to want different things in a home? Yeah, but I think it's going to be short term. You know, do you, do you, uh, you know, do you remember post 9-11 when everybody said, everyone's going to leave the downtown area. No one's going to want to live in the financial district. Everybody's going to want to leave. And you know what? That was all BS, right? I mean, you know, sure. Percentage of people are always moving in and out of New York City. And, and it's a good thing because more people want to move into New York City and there wasn't enough inventory. I think, I think there's going to be some reimagining of, of our homes, but I don't think it's going to be talking to home builder friends of mine, right? I don't think it's going to be so massively transformational that we relook at our homes in that way. I think it's very short term, right? Like, listen to me for the person listening. I also think that what we're experiencing right now is also very short term. In the course of your life, this is short term, a moment in time. This is going to end and we're going to move through this. And there's going to be a lot of what we're accustomed to right around the corner. You just mentioned home builders, and that was sort of the last on this list of what the future is going to look like. What are you hearing from the home builders that you know? Are they planning to maybe adjust how they build and what the the layout of a home is? No, no. But here's, here's, here's the real issue, ready? If your state has lots of regulation, home builders don't want to be there. If, you're, if your regulations are a little bit looser, and I don't mean like looser in a bad way, like, yes, go entitle more land. Let's get that done quickly. Let's meet the demands of buyers. Let's, you know, we got this enormous wave of, of younger, you know, men and women that are coming in and wanting to buy a house, right? And there's no inventory. So, you know, again, you go state by state, you see building happening everywhere. Now, I'm in Newport Beach, California. There's like four, you know, mega mansions around me, you know, that are being built as we speak, two of them for spec, three of them for the people that want to live there. So look, I keep saying it again, it's a moment in time. So I I don't think just like I remember after 9-11 working with so many people, right? Especially the high-end brokers, Matt, like, oh my God, is anybody ever going to buy a house again? And when all this was unfolding, oh my God, the high-end is going to be totally decimated. I'm like, no, guess what? High-end now has to be anything four years or older is now really old. Like that's the truth. And if it's not turnkey and great, guess what? It's going to sit for a while. And if it's ridiculously overpriced because the agent wasn't a good negotiator and the seller was better at it, that's also sitting. But guess what's also happening? Nice, newer, right? Priced reasonably well. They're selling every single day because people with money can still buy those houses because the financing they can get by going to their bank and borrowing against their assets at 1%, right? Those deals are being done. The hard part is you got way too many agents that let the seller be the better salesperson and they overprice these crappy, you know, crappy homes or homes that aren't configured right for what the demands are. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying the walkthrough, we'd appreciate it if you tell the real estate agents in your network about us. Even more, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Your feedback helps us get better, and in some cases can also help new listeners find and hear us. And when we get around to having you on the show, the more listeners, the better, right? Uh, I have been to uh, uh, to your summit, by the way, the last, I think, three years, and One of the things that you coach your coaches and have them coach their clients on that I really value, and I wonder if you can uh, sort of maybe wrap us up in this way, is you talk to them about keeping their finances in order. And I'm sure that, you know, there are some agents, even some successful agents have taken somewhat of a hit over the last couple months. So as they're looking ahead to the next six months, then again to 2021, What kind of advice, what kind of things should they be doing in terms of keeping their own internal house in order? If I could wave a magic wand and I could, I could, you know, remove 
two issues from, from every real estate agent on the planet. Number one would be, ready, that they believe in themselves. And number two would be that they're responsible with their money. And if, if just the, I mean, I, and that's probably totally Pollyanna, but like if, if I died tomorrow and those two things happened, right, I would die a very happy, very successful human being. So here's the issue when it comes to money. Most agents don't have any money skills, which means they have Uncle Larry doing their taxes. Uncle Larry is a moron, so their taxes aren't done correctly. They're not maximizing all of the very limited today opportunities to to be better when it comes to taxes. They don't have someone that is helping them manage their money and talk about what they need to do to set themselves up for retirement. Is that buying more real estate? Is it being in equities? Is it buying bonds, right? They're not disciplined. So what happens is they get a check. They're not incorporated, right? They don't have an LLC or an LLP or an S Corp or C Corp or whatever, you know, because because Uncle Larry's doing their taxes and he's a dumbass and hasn't told them that they're a business working inside of a business as an independent contractor. And you have rules and things that you can follow to be in a better situation. So they get a check and poof, the money's gone, right? Versus what I've been teaching forever, which is you get a check. And it goes into your, you know, Matt McGee LLC and 35 to 40% goes directly into your tax account. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. It goes right to your taxes because that's how it works. And then another 30% goes to run your business or 20% to run your business. And the balance goes to your home account. And if you're really good, when it gets to your home account, it's then reallocated for long-term savings, debt reduction, you know, manage the house pay for the kids to go to school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And most agents, like it's common sense. It's the most watched video I have on YouTube, north of 10 million views. And what's hysterical is, you know, 27% of the comments are like, this is too basic. This is stupid. Who is this guy? You know, blah, 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 right? And I just giggle my ass off, right? (laughs) Because thank you, all of you, because by the way, you just helped the algorithm of YouTube get me even more views, you know, without having to spend a dollar on advertising. So thank you. But here's the thing, you ready? This, just like 2007, 8, 9, what I hope it calls forth for people is to move common sense to common practice, right? Common sense says, I'm a business, therefore I must incorporate. Common sense says, whether I make $30,000 a year or $30,000 a day, if I'm not a money master, I better surround myself with people that have an inkling of it because whatever advice they give me, that's the direction I'm going to take. And if I'm taking that from Uncle Larry, metaphorically, or Aunt Susie, who you know is just kind of good with a calculator and has figured this stuff out, you're probably not getting the advice that's going to help you retire one day or be in a better position to win. So I think it's about surrounding yourself with that. It's also about creating a family dynamic where you discuss money, right? I tell people all the time, like I have like 33 questions and it's like, what's your earliest memory of money? What's the, you know, what's the pain point moment you can remember in your life where money became an issue? How did you bring that forward into your life? And how does it control the decisions you make today? You know, if that wasn't true, where would you be instead? And you start to get people to unravel that, that money, weight, relationships, spirituality, politics, most of those five completely freak people out. And it's the only stuff I like to talk about. As we wrap up on a scale of, say, one to 10, you're looking ahead to the rest of this year, next year, whatever it might be. How optimistic are you for real estate agents? Um, 1,000. Scale from one to 10, 1,000. Matter of fact, I would, I'll make this statement. I think of the 400,000, 500,000 agents that are busy and active. By the way, you and I both know that's the same number of agents that are active anyway. You, you know what I mean? There's really only four or 500,000 agents that really actually do anything. And I'm a part of the you know, the Wall Street Journal, America's best, top 1,000, America's best, top 15,500, you know, to be on one of those two lists, you know, the top 1,000, they're the absolute cream de la cream. The 15,500, you have to have done $20 million in volume or 50 transactions. It's a small number of agents that are operating at that level. The group below that, Matt, I I, I wish I had enough private equity money to go buy 25 to 50% of every one of their businesses based upon a three or five X EBITDA, right? Like, like really, because the upside potential of those agents in this environment 
is so tremendous. I would make, a, I'd, I'd invest, let's call it, you know, I don't know, 750 million bucks to buy 25 to 50% of every one of those businesses. And I would 4X that return in about two or three years because once I owned 25 or 50% of their business, guess what? They'd have a business plan, a marketing plan, a budget. They'd be shooting videos. They'd be making phone calls. They'd be working on their presentations. They'd be growing their market share. We would just, that's how bullish I am on the industry. You with me? Like there is going to be so many great agents that, that are birthed from this, right? I, I'm excited just thinking about it because this is all the great companies of our time that we admire today all started in financial crisis times. Facebook, Amazon, right? Instagram, no, but you know, Disney, IBM, Apple, all these iconic brands all started during recessions. Congratulations, everybody. It's your time. If you can get through this, you're going to get through anything. I lo- Tom, I love that. And I've taken you right up to, uh, I think we're right at a- about an hour or so. Hey, thank you so much for uh, for coming on the walkthrough. And um, thank you guys for doing what you're doing and helping so many agents. And uh, for everybody out there, I wish you blessings, health and vitality, and the resiliency and the grittiness to go out and kick ass between now and the end of the year and help a lot of people buy and sell real estate. They need you right now. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. It was really, really fun to talk shop with Tom Ferry and get his thoughts today on the future of real estate. And then last week, those six tactics that he shared for getting more listings. Now, Tom did say I could give out his text number and invite any listeners to send him a message. Are you ready for that? I'll give it out twice. The number is 949-216-5466. He did say that it might take a couple of days to get a reply. He gives that number out quite a bit and gets a lot of texts, as you can imagine. Again, the number is 949-216-5466. All right, let's do our takeaways segment, and then we have a home light home run from an agent in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and then we'll wrap things up after that. Number one, takeaway. Tom wants agents to make it rain between now and November because he expects this year's elections to put a damper on the market at the end of the year. Number two, he thinks some sellers will still want traditional open houses while others will prefer the virtual open houses that many of you have been doing these past couple months. Number three, if door knocking is your main lead gen strategy, Tom suggests you pivot hard right now. Number four, he is more optimistic that we'll eventually find ways to make client appreciation events work for all involved. Number five, Tom gave a a great quick lesson on money management. So listen back to the last, say, five or six minutes of the conversation if you missed that. It's based on the most popular video on Tom's YouTube channel, and I will link to that video in today's show notes. Okay, if you have questions for Tom, questions for me or Homelight, you can leave a voicemail anytime. It's 415-322-3328. That's 415-322-3328. You can also send an email. It's walkthrough at homelight.com. In fact, call or email me with your biggest win of the week or of the month, and I'll try to share it in our Homelight Home Run segment. Here, for example, is this week's home run. It comes to us from Beth Steinke. She's an agent working in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Her big win was getting a difficult home under contract. She says, the home itself was beautiful, but it came with a difficult solar panel lease. How bad was it? Well, the buyers would have to assume an extra $200 to $300 monthly debt for the next 18 years. Ouch. Beth says she could have sold the home a hundred times if not for that lease. She eventually did get it under contract after a little more than two months on the market. She says two weeks is about normal for a home like this one. Well, that sounds like a home run to me, Beth. Congrats on your perseverance and thanks so much for sharing. Hey listeners, can I ask a quick favor? Uh, If you listen on Apple Podcasts or if you have an Apple account, would you mind leaving a rating and review of the walkthrough We have about 25 to 30 ratings last time I looked, and I'd love to see that number get up to like 50 
or 100 or more. All right, that's all for this week. Thanks again to Tom Ferry for joining us. Thank you for listening. Remember, at Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created the walkthrough. We're on a journey exploring how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.